Eu não preciso nem falar nada, né? Senta confortável, pega uma pipoquinha, porque tem mais 30 e lá vai porrada de minutos de gameplay de Hogwarts Legacy. Saiu agora há pouquinho, tá? Se você não viu, eu vou deixar uma playlist agora arrumadinha, porque já temos o início dessa gameplay. E eles voltaram aí com mais um pouquinho de gameplay, legendas em português, tá? E a gente vai ver, né? E vamos comentar os detalhes, vamos ver o que vai acontecer aí. Já começou... Opa, já temos detalhes aí, né? Já viu como é que é? brotou na vassoura? Arrancou a vassoura do rabo? Eita, que loucura, né? <risos> ah, vamos lá. Agora, ó. Tem legendas, tá vendo, né? Tá em 4K. Eu gosto mecânicas você vê no right, a a alguém, não. And, and occasionally as Andrew's kind of flying up or flying down, you might notice it, it draining or not. And, and this isn't the present day where all the broom technology is well known and advanced and, and, and everything that we know ah. earlier time where they're still trying to figure out, you know, we're not at the 3000 yet, we're at the, like, <laughs> we're at the 11. So. Oh my goodness, I just, I'm just <laughs> so so 3000. right now because this is just so beautiful. Tá lindo mesmo, né? Olha. By the way, the the broom is that like the only one, or can you like upgrade the broom to go faster? Yeah, so we have. Uh, Eita, tem loja de vassoura, da hora. And so that sells a variety of different brooms, and it was important to us that the player could customize themselves é. based on their. Tudo é personalizado. So they're purely cosmetic, but uh, if you talk to the shopkeep uh, and help him out, he'll actually sell upgrades. Yeah, and those those upgrades Nossa, que da hora, make it so that where normally the broom you can only fly um you can only go at max speed. It's kind of like a turbo meter down there. You can mm -hmm. only go at max speed without the meter going down, kind of closer to the ground. And as you raise into the air, you'll notice the meter drop. And so the Ah, olha ali, ó, no canto direito inferior tem o um negócio de... And there the the broom owner at at the sporting goods store in in Hogsmeade is trying to perfect the broom and get better. Ah, que legal. And you can participate that and get better and better brooms through that. I see. <laughs> and I, I love that that mechanic encourages you to actually explore the world and kind of stay close to the ground. It's not just a travel mechanic, point A to point B. You're not just flying high over everything, although it is beautiful, something I really love doing. Nossa, muita coisa no mapa. Vocês estão olhando o radar lá no outro canto? And so kind of keeping you down at the ground level. And to me, it feels like it's got this kind of surfing vibe over the... Yeah. Over oh my god, the like, I'm just like, I want to snatch the controller from Andrew right now because I want to go to the mountaintop, I want to go to the forest, and to the hamlet, or... Well, well, uh, eles sempre convidam alguém da comunidade, tá? Esse cara da blusa amarela aí, ele é da comunidade, por isso que ele tá falando essas coisas. E o, o demoísta, né? O profissional de game play tá no canto aqui da tela. Ah, olha And so we refer to those as hamlets, and they're opportunities to learn those ways. Deu dinheiro. Um, how those different locations have kind of like learned to live, what their relationships are with characters at Hogsmeade and Hogwarts, and so they're both quest opportunities out here and a chance to kind of get to know more of the area, even beyond Hogwarts and Hogsmeade that we've already experienced. And you also notice on the mini map, like lots of little icons. É, ali ó, o mini mapa tá cheio, velho. In, in the hamlets that you can participate in. You know, whether it's a vendor or different puzzles and challenges or different secrets that exist, um, each one of those icons are different opportunities for gameplay. And you'll notice that, that same thing as we venture out into the open world as well. So when you go out into the open world and you see, see those icons, whether they're on the mini map or on your map or off in the distance, those things are opportunities to say, like, I want to increase my inventory capacity. Mm -hmm. There are puzzles left behind by old wizards, you know, that you can solve that actually grant you those. Uh, if you see ruins off in the off in the distance and you visit them, you might find opportunities to actually expand and learn about your ancient magic. And as you and as you kind of encounter different enemies dotted on the landscape, sometimes those characters, uh, poachers or dark wizards, might be hoarding different uh, magical resources that are valuable to you as you're playing the game. So each one has kind of like a way to connect to our gameplay loops and provide different opportunities that just kind of reward you for poking around. Pô, tem uns negócios que dá para interagir ali, né? Mas é... ai, cara, esse jogo tem um potencial muito grande para ser MMO, né? É meio triste que ele não seja MMO, né? Mas tudo bem, eu não vou reclamar antes de jogar. Uh, getting on our flying mount. 
Um, we're gonna hop on our Onyx Hippogriff here. The Onyx Hippogriff is our pre-order bonus. Oh my God! There you just Eita. pops out of the. <laughs> que da hora! Oh, wait, you can use it as a horsey. I mean, a horse. I guess that is. Ah, que legal, cacete! Hippogriff, you can you can totally ride it like a ground mount, and you can lift off into the air. And we tried to make sure that each 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 of those interactions, so the broom's really good at reaching that top speed at at kind of traveling the world as quickly as possible. But sometimes it's really nice to get on the Hippogriff because of that ground speed uh, or those transitions. Uh, and sometimes it just feels amazing just to be riding around on a Hippogriff. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, it's, it, it really is kind of like... Uh, ah, que foda, velho. On it. And que foda, mano. Those transitions kind of going from run to fly and just being able to go wherever you want. And we tried to make sure that that those, that each one of these things that you can interact with have have a unique identity and a reason for being. Que da hora, velho. <laughs> and oh my god, like I see like different like e... areas, like a swampy area. Yeah, but, like, can you go to like entire map anywhere you go. There are regions that are like blocked from you. Yeah, as soon like... as as soon as you there's kind of a moment where the world kind of opens up to you outside of Hogwarts as a student and right from that moment uh, early on in the game you can go wherever you want. Mm. So you might find Clásico, né? challenges in different areas and you'll see different spots as Andrew's moving. Olha que jogo lindo, velho. Que que é isso? Cara. We have got like a coast and we've got different types of environments out in the world just to kind of uh, pepper your experience, reward you for exploring, keep things fresh. Uh, all those things exist with the around. So cool. I love that windmill. It's like so rustic. Like I keep forgetting that this is like 1800s. The Wizarding World we've never really seen before. Like it feels so authentic. Like it just, it, it, it's part of it. Yeah. I, I, no, it's any mal, né, mano? And, and, I'm gonna have Andrew stop here. We're gonna use a bit of dev magic to uh, change the seasons. Actually, I want to. I want you to see what this world looks like, uh, covered in snow. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, please. Eles vão mudar o comando e mudar a estação. Ah, não! Eles estão entrando os comments. Deixa eu até tirar aqui o som porque eu não sei se até onde essa música pode ser extremamente. Oh my God! This is so beautiful. Oh my goodness! Nossa, que foda, velho! Que isso, cara? Oh my god, it changes the landscape like completely. Mas jogo não pode ser assim, mano. Esse jogo não pode ser assim. Eu não tô conseguindo confiar nisso aí. Não é possível, mano. Impact, like impact on the gameplay, or does it like is just the weather of Scotland? Uh, yeah, we use it. We really use it as a narrative marker through through the game. So as you're progressing through your main storyline, it was important for us to kind of like have those moments that kind of felt like when you're reading the books or watching the movies where you know you'll see kind of like the title card winter and you're really feeling those that passage of time while you're a student you know going through your year at hogwarts and i think i think we wanted to duplicate that and for me it's really fun that it's not just on the outside which which i i agree i think it looks really beautiful um but within the school as well so there are moments like when it reaches certain holidays or things like that where hogsmeade oh, uh, reacts oh to holidays God. and the school reacts to holidays and you see the decorations around those environments change um nice. that really helped just kind Nossa, of muito mano muito animal velho que and isso it's cara it's not just you know for the seasons those those kind of vibe things um like we have a day night cycle and that day night cycle it, even though similarly, like it's largely about vibe, when you go into Hogsmeade in the evening, there's less characters there. Uh, around the school, you'll notice it kind of dies down and quiets down. Just oh, when there's right, just yeah. candlelight and students kind of like as you're walking through the halls. But in that day night cycle is where we've kind of placed uh, a few items where, you know, whether or not you can collect them or whether or not you can interact with them with, that are a little bit restricted by the day night cycle. This game can't be broken, man. It has to be functioning. And and we're just looking at this view of Hogwarts in the distance. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's part of what I love most about flying around in this game, whether it's on a hippogriff or, or, or on the broom. No, I, I mean, you talk about going anywhere and things that you can see in the distance, and that's one of my... I, I still can't get over, like, no matter... I play this so much, but I still... I still can't get over the fact that I can see Hogwarts out there, and there's just something beautiful about knowing that all of all of the things inside of it, the classrooms, the students, the professors, um, all the places I can go, I can just fly my hippogriff, land in the courtyard, enter the front doors, and just walk, you know, to the library. Isso é muito incrível, mano. Isso é muito incrível, mano. That it's all contiguous and just kind of like one, one space is still exciting to me after all this. I mean, I'm just, just, I'm speechless right now. É, eu também tô meio sem palavras. Tá difícil de acreditar, não tá? Não tá meio difícil de acreditar? 
Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to switch over to combat. Ih, vai ter porrada, hein? Intro to combat. This é, is going to really go uh, a oh, lot more of a deep dive on uh, <laughs> using the Dark Arts Battle Arena, which is part of our deluxe edition. All right, Andrew's got us in the Forbidden Forest, which is where the Dark Arts Battle Arena is, uh, which is part of the deluxe and digital deluxe edition. I, I, I love the way the assim? Dark Arts Battle Arena is actually... Uh, part of the world it's integrated into the world so your experience is more immersive than just choosing an option for mas, mas eu não entendi parece que isso é só da edição deluxe exactly <laughs> there are many reasons to go to the forbidden forest but uh, he's also wearing the uh, dark arts cosmetic hoje eles estão querendo vender né hoje eles estão querendo que a gente compre o jogo na pré-venda oh my god ah, que da hora digital deluxe edition Meu dinheiro velho full, full dark arts here um, that's good. That's what I like going down. But I like this uh, this battle arena. It is a great place to show off, um, really combat in a big way because it unlocks some interesting abilities for you and, and allows you to, to uh, really play around with uh, combat in a in a deep way. And is this like the only arena like this in the game where you can like practice? And yeah. Do... So in the in the base game we have uh, two combat arenas normally that and so everyone mm -hmm. has access to those. And each of the combat arenas are an opportunity to kind of just go through a difficult combat challenge. No, like, you know, so it's in order to uh, earn a uh, a different cosmetic. No, so that's a hope. But depending on the version of the game, you will have access to some things. Dark Arts Battle Arena. That's also true. Uh, Nossa, cortar arena. conteúdo é bizarro, né, mano? Uh, one of the things that we're excited about in the Dark Arts Battle Arena that people can do is is you come in preloaded with different abilities. So. Uh, the unforgivable curses are something that everyone's going to have access to through the base game and going to be able to earn Sim. and they can make choices in order to kind of like add that to their repertoire. Ah, ele tá arrumando o yeah. Olha que legal, vai ter tipo uma tela para você organizar as magias when ali, you, ó. When you play the Dark Arts Combat Arena, you actually have access to all those things as kind of like a, a way to test them all. And so it's a chance to kind of like tour and play with the Dark Arts and decide whether or not that is a path Dá pra ver cores, né? Amarelas, roxinhas, zero. Nossa, mas caralho, os caras vão monetizar tudo nesse jogo. Você já tá preparado? Já começa a juntar dinheiro, já investe. Porque, meu amigo... Que medo, que medo. Oh, my... Caraca, isso foi muito legal. É. We're start, we're starting off strong. Oh É porque é muito forte, mano. A insta kill a magia. It's extreme power just that it's still fun to use and then there's some Nossa. some ways that we'll probably talk about to 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 adjust that but i don't know i i don't know if there are things on the screen that you just have questions about well, like, for, like i see like little blue things uh, <laughs> muito foda yeah. muito foda tá so, before, like that sign well it's like so in the community we call it the ancient magic sign and i don't know if that's how it's called yeah <laughs> in the game so the community is astute so uh on the development side and in player facing in the game we reference that as your ancient magic community oh <laughs> so it is ancient magic <laughs> that is yeah so as your as your abilities in the game keep growing and you become exposed to some of the secrets about your own kind of history and your own your own abilities um you start unlocking new powers. So one of those powers, you'll see the R1 button appearing uh, throughout the game. Uh, that's an ancient magic throw, we call it. Ele tá jogando uma dificuldade muito baixa, os inimigos são lentos, não fazem nada, né? É só uns bonecos pra você espancar mesmo. The L1 plus R1 appear over somebody's head. Mm -hmm. um, that's an ability to cast a, a very devastating and powerful uh, ancient magic spell oh, to do a ton of damage against the character. I see, I see. And the way that manifests itself uh, depends on the type of enemy. Ali um, ali um, ali um. Tá ali um, ali um. A wide variety of enemies in here that are pressuring the player in different ways. You'll notice there's there's uh, abilities that kind of bubble up under the player as he's fighting, that force him to move. And there's different ways that we want the player to oh. move around on the Ding. field. And that's actually a good link to the ancient magic meter in general. And the reason I say that is because as you're doing different things in combat, you're protegoing and you're doing different abilities and you can kind of speculate with your talents, there are different ways to get that meter to build faster and faster. But one of the most effective base ways to build up that meter fast, that way you can launch these devastating attacks whenever you want to, 
is is to actually perform combos. So you see that combo uh -huh. appearing, uh -huh. and it's almost like your, yes. your emotions are building up, mm -hmm. and then basically that builds up enough that you can attack someone. But as the combo meter builds up, at some point you strike someone and a, a piece of their magic kind of falls out of them. You'll see the blue orbs in, in the in the game world, and there's something that only you can see in, in, All right, DG. in the world. And it's another reason to move around on the battlefield. If you can go up and collect those things and ah, vocês entenderam? Então vai ter os inimigos vão dropar uns negocinhos, tem que pegar, entendeu? Por isso que você se move no campo, senão você ficaria parado soltando magia, né? Legal. The tools that you can bring to combat as well, the kind of change the way you play and I think McKinsey knows a lot about what's going on with the plants and potions. And so the the tools are really interesting because they're basically like a prior investment. So you can bring the potions and the plants that you grow in the room of requirement to combat uh to essentially kind of help you um defeat enemies a lot quicker and and more efficiently. So some of the tools that you'll see here are like the rock skin potion. So Mano, eu tava com medo do combate lá no meu primeiro vídeo e e tá parecendo que tá bem legal. Tá parecendo bem divertido o combate. Ih, chegou, hein? Troll da montanha. Enemies, hard hitting enemies like trolls. Um that's super helpful. A vada que dá, bro, filho. Vai. The troll just collapsed from one of the One hit no troll. Obviously we have the wigan will potion as well, uh which increases your health. And then we have the focus potion. So when Alan talks about having to balance a Vada Kedavra with a long cooldown, because obviously it's an instant kill, uh, one thing that you could do is brew a focus potion, and that will increase um, how quickly you're. Ah, que legal! Nossa, velho, os caras colocaram bons elementos de gameplay no game, hein? Ó! Oh. Ó, tem a Vada Kedavra de novo, A Vada. Safada Kevara! Tchau! Yeah. So that's like when we were talking about the almost the uh, setup of the arena. You also have Ai, que legal. So we have things like the venomous tentacula that you can put down and it acts like a turret and it just kind of shoots enemies around the battlefield. Nível 18 tem o troll. So cool. This is like a truly like Hufflepuffian way to bro. <laughs> the battle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, that was super important to us, that there were these like multiple ways. And so you can see there's there's a ton of different things that you can use. Uh, the Mandrake is one, so you can pull it out and it stuns with its like piercing cry, these enemies uh, in, in a radius. And another thing I want to call out uh, that we're seeing on the side of the screen here is these, these dueling feats, which I, I love because I love anything that prompts me to play a game in a different way, a unique way. I don't want to get stuck in my style, you know? Uh, and, and so this is a way to, if you want to get stuck in your style, go for it. If you just want to blast people with spells, go for it. But we also want to uh, have some things over here that may make you use certain plants or certain potions or... Mano, muito foda, muito foda, muito irado, muito irado. Combate muito da hora, mano. And the field guide challenges, this is the way that the field guide manifests like challenges for you to do in combat. And exactly to your point, um, we just wanted a way to encourage players to to explore the different systems, to help them decide, to just kind of practice with them and explore what they want to do. Because there really are so many different ways that you can push talents. Uh, when you see the the green X's on characters, that's right. and that's kind of a, through your talents, you can unlock this kind of cursing mechanic that sort of like links the fates of these different characters on the battlefield. That way, uh, as you get the, the as you're cursing different characters, they all begin sharing. Them. Nossa, man. We have things like Avada Kedavra, which is the insta kill. But if you curse everyone before you insta kill this one guy, they can all drop dead for that kind of ultimate Voldemort oh, 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 oh. fantasy. And so, oh my God. <laughs> there are there are dark arts fantasies. There's fantasies about being more of a defense against the dark arts character, things like that. That misty step that you see um, occasionally being used on the battlefield. And we can also spec into our potions and plants to make them more powerful and more efficacious. So it's wow. all about which type of player you feel like you are. Sabe que é muito louco, tá dando uma sensação de que é possível você ficar muito forte, tá ligado? Tipo, é um jogo que parece que tem um grau de desafio, mas você pode ficar muito forte. Eu acho isso animal, velho. Eu acho isso animal. Yeah. And speaking of plants and potions, we are going to be putting the dark arts away, put those unforgivable oh. curses away, 
uh, and heading to the room of requirement, which is your... Opa, vambora. It's a personalizable space. Opa, vambora. Ih, ca caraca, olha esse jogo, velho. Não é possível, mano. Eu vou ficar maluco com esse game. Eu vou ficar maluco com esse game. All right, Andrew's got us in the room of requirement, uh, wearing, we, we kind of went casual mode on the outfit here, wearing a nice jumper. Um, and, and I think that's a, a good jumping off point, jumping off point, uh, <laughs> for uh, the personalization of the space as well, not just your character and, and the visuals of your character, but actually this space is a, a place that you can make your own. Um, yeah, it was super important to us that this space really did feel like um, your reflection uh, as a wizard. So you can change the architecture in here. What? Uh, <laughs> different themes throughout. Uh, start ah, que da hora, uh, velho. Really just hammer home that this is... This is Nossa, que da hora. <laughs> this is beautiful. We never expected that to be. Oh my God. That's the thing is not only can you change the architecture here, but you can actually conjure little objects uh, into this space, as you can see. So. You, there's like statues that you can do and ornaments and tables and rugs. Nossa! A bunch of little things that really flesh out the space and bring it to life. Oh my god, because like we, we had an idea that those places where you brew stuff, that's where you can change, but you can do all of this. Where do you even get this stuff? Like there's a furniture store? In <laughs> yeah, so we call them conjurations. Uh, and the conjuration recipes can be purchased at Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade. Um, but also as you engage in different types of gameplay throughout the world, you'll be rewarded with uh, different objects. That's so cool. Olha. Mm -hmm. You can change the color. You can, que isso, the color. Cara? you can place it basically <gasps> anywhere. Just... Oh my God, you're so tiny. <laughs> it's like for baby Niffler. <laughs> and I love how the, the system too is designed. It, it's not mechanical, it's immersive. Mm -hmm. And so you get the magical effect of conjuring it in and you're... you're you're actually doing this in the world as your character, but it, the, the way you've blended like that gameplay with yeah. the, the immersive uh, uh, design of personalizing oh the space. Oh my god! Like, and I love the animation how it like appears. You know, like it's not just like there. It's like it almost like mm -hmm. it operates. It's hey. quite beautiful, and that was the thing is we want. Olha que da hora, mano! Really nice because the magic in the wizarding world is everywhere. It's it's physical, it's kinetic, and it's whimsical. We really wanted to nail that whimsy in the space. Uh, oh, e aí você pode tipo plantar, ó. Não só você pode you like conjure things and you can change their their look, but you can do that with the utility objects as well. So you can see that we have planting pots and potion stations and you can change the look of those uh, as well. And these are the areas where as we had mentioned previously, you'll be Ah, mano, que da hora, velho. Meu Deus, mano. Não, não pode tá, não, 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 não. Doing these uh, like kind of Esse jogo ronca à noite, só pode ser isso, é o único defeito desse jogo. You would bring your gear, gear to be identified and gear to have um like rates put on it, which I believe Alan can talk to. Oh. Yeah, um I, we keep bringing up appearance and and how Eu tô até descabelado, desculpa, chat. Like uh, in the game, you can look like anything you want to whenever you want to. Um, but the player will be finding different types of gear that we call it uh, as you progress through the game. Que que and essentially, we just know that that clothes and different items in the wizarding world can have different magical properties. And as you uh, as you explore and as you adventure and as you defeat enemies, you're going to be finding different pieces of gear um, that have different abilities. And that can help you in your journey and are a major part of you kind of growing as a wizard and advancing as a wizard. Oh, and so there's a huge list. <laughs> and not all the time, uh, whenever, whenever you get a new piece of gear, you don't necessarily know exactly what it does. And so. Estou completamente a bublé das ideias, tá? Completamente. Estou todo. Que legal. Muito bom, velho. Bring that, that gear that you're uncertain about and learn what its abilities are. Right, yeah, that's so cool. And then as the space advances even further, and the space will eventually grow its own rooms, and you're going to get new recipes, you know, like, like Mackenzie's talking about, all these different things keep expanding. And as it expands, eventually you're going to earn what we see here, which is called the loom. And when you set up a loom, it's a, an ability to essentially customize exactly which magical properties are on your gear and take any piece of gear and adjust its properties and tweak what it does. Today's upgrades for the past that, that, that you can make anything look like anything. The collection of of cost, uh, of um, appearances, we call it, mm -hmm. or um, cosmetics, we've been referring to it right. in this stream. 
those types of things you can use and you can apply a look to any other other look. So if you get a piece of gear, you put it on, you look like that, but you can change it to look like whatever you want. That's so cool. And, and it, Tem um transmogzinho já, né? Put some ability to the sweater, but then you can just swap yeah. that ability. Yep, and the uh, appearances you can edit whenever you want in the gear screen. The loom is specifically about applying uh, traits and and applying uh, larger upgrades that just kind of grant you greater statistical advantage or give you really specific abilities that w blend in nicely with where you're trying to go with your combat fantasy or talents and things like that. Interesting. I'm just like, I'm just seeing that, that they're just like pumpkin fur, moonka fur. What, where does that come from? <laughs> yeah. And so you'll notice that the ingredients that are used to add traits uh, and to upgrade your gear uh, are based around beasts. So this is where we get into the beast care uh, Be section, done. which is inside this Vivario. Oh. Kind of bigger space on the inside idea. Eita so nice. Here we have a couple of beasts out. We have Eita. A, and a moon calf <laughs> and a niffler. Uh, and a kneesel as well. So oh quite god. a variety. <laughs> oh my god, he's just like a big puppy. <laughs> they're I so love their cuddling. <laughs> oh my god, they're together. Oh, that's so cute. They are adorable. And so part of beast care uh, is petting them as well, but feeding them too. And so once you do those things, that's when they feel safe enough that they can they'll give you their their magical ingredients. So mooncalf fur, um, niffler fur, etc., uh, that can then be used in your in your gear. Então você tem que, além de tudo, cuidar dos bichos para os bichos te dar recursos para você poder usar esses negócios. Oh my God. Yeah, and we really and feeding them food as well uh, and to build that relationship with with your beast in addition to be able to care for beasts you can actually uh, conjure things in this space as well uh, the house the cottage yeah <laughs> right and so we I have view it is cool looking uh, in this area and a lot of them are purely cosmetic but they look really cool again it's the personalization uh, of this space oh my good no this is like I'm gonna spend eight hours just <laughs> designing this whole area to personalize this is like cool is like you have this little play area like a Man. personalized fish tank so to say <laughs> Os caras colocaram elemento de jogo de fazenda, tá ligado? And there's like a decoration aspect, but there's also we were saying inside uh, as well is there's a utility uh, utility aspect to it too. Oh. So as you uh, progress in the game and you're able to purchase more conjurations, you're able to speed up your process. So one of them, for example, is the food processor, which uh, it allows for the beast in the space to automatically get feed, so you don't have to do it manually. Uh, and so you're, you're really building the progression for yourself here. Um, in addition, there's also a toy box where you, oh, can, <laughs> where you can play with your beasts. Ai, que legal, velho. And, um, there's a bunch of toys in it, uh, and each beast has their own favorite toy. So as you can imagine, the moon calf really likes the moon ball, uh, or the needle <laughs> as like a little cat really likes to chase the yarn ball as well. Right. <laughs> and they're oh, super wow. cute. Oh my god. Watching them, it's so cute. Que isso, cara? Que que tá acontecendo, meu irmão? Uh, is that the world is a dangerous place. And so by going and rescuing these beasts and bringing ba them back here uh, and caring for them, you're really helping helping them out. There's poachers in the overland uh, who want to who hunt these beasts for their material. So instead, you're you're caring for them. You're giving them a home. Right. Oh my god, this grab cord is just <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> But he looks like my dog. Okay, my dog's right now for sure. Oh, uh, you could actually name them as well. So, like oh, your yeah. dog. <laughs> back into that personalization. Puta, que you know, foda. Yeah, Olha. We didn't want you to just like throw in, oh, here's a here's a grab horn in here. Like, this can be named. Menu de play cinco, hein? Andrews. É que deve ser um dev kit, né? Agora que eu pensei. Bruce. The good name. Nice. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we've we've created this really nice space, and and uh, you you can get additional vivariums, correct? Uh, to different kind of aesthetics and looks to where. Meu Deus, eles vão monetizar yeah. tudo nessa porra, mano. Them. Progression is a big part of this space as well. So, as you progress through the story, uh, you will unlock more vivariums. So, as you can see, this one's quite meadow themed, um, big, open, bright. Uh, but there's other ones, say like a swamp that you might encounter. Nossa, um, que and da it's hora. Really a visual effect to uh, and more space for for your feet. Oh, so it's like those. So when we're inside the room requirement, there's like on the left. 
There's that moon glow from one entrance and then some shrubbery going on in the right. Is that what you're talking about? Yep, that's exactly it. Ah, oh, you put trees in here too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And, and another thing with the, the beast care that I think is, is great, uh, you know, tying back to the same kind of thing that you did with like the broom, where the broom is not just a, a method of travel, it's, it's actually built in and integrated into the world. In the same way, like beast care isn't just this, this added element, you're not just throwing it on top, there's really this like narrative and, and integration to Yeah, everything, everything connects. So as you progress through the missions, you'll expand the space. Um, as you earn resources, you'll go into Hogsmeade and, and use them to uh, unlock the gameplay here and, and unlock new conjurations and different things to play around with. In the open world, uh, it's in those, different, um, in those different environments, like the different combat and conflicts and bandit camps and different things like that that exist in the Overland. Those things are what hold recipes uh, that exist in the loom. So, all these things have a way of connecting. Um, moonstone that you find out in the world is the resource that we use to conjure everything that's found throughout the world. Um, forgeables are used for recipes. So really everything's like a everything's like a cycle and keeps you coming back. But even with the story that's being Mano, que animal. You know, I think people know who Poppy is. And... Não, eu tô eu tô idiota. Eu tô idiota. Tô com muito medo da monetização desse jogo, muito medo. Mas é é é incrível. É incrível. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Even even of kind of like your interactions with Beast in that narrative. So, you know, you bringing up Poppy, there are more there are more uh, kind of mysteries to discover and things to discover out in the world that have to do with her and that have to do with caring for beasts. And so different characters have their own, have their own stuff uh, uh, that, that just kind of make this all just kind of like the beginning, the, be the beginning of your journey. Well, we could spend hours in here, but we're going to have to end the stream. Ah, no, velho. I mean, this is, I'm just so blown away by how how beautiful it looks. The open world seems so detailed and there's so many things to do. And like the combat, I, we're gonna have, we're gonna spend like two weeks or more just breaking it down by- No, pieces. no, o bagulho, o bagulho so tá, o bagulho tá outro nível, mano. This world, like I'm so happy o bagulho tá outro nível, mano. this overall gameplay. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got more for you to discover and find on your own. Thank you for, so much for being here. Thank you for watching. No, que que é isso, cara? It's available for pre-order now. It releases February 10th with 72-hour early access for owners of the Collectors, Deluxe, and Digital Eita, Deluxe. Eita, nice. First, we've got a little surprise for you. Ih, tem uma surpresa. Hi. Ih, que surpresa. Tem uma surpresa, velho. Ai, pega o meu dinheiro, pega o meu dinheiro, Warner. Que jogo, mano? Que que é isso, cara? Que que vocês acharam? Comenta aí, eu tô, eu, eu não sei por onde começar. O negócio está lindo, estou morrendo de medo da monetização. Por quê? Porque eu quero pedir dinheiro, eu vou tacar na tela do computador aqui, cara. Eu quero, eu quero construir meu viveiro, eu quero fazer carinho nos bichinhos, eu quero voar, eu quero batalhar, eu quero todas as arenas. Eu estou, estou iludidíssimo, tá? Por favor, alguém mantenha a minha sanidade no campo dos comentários, porque eu tô maluco. Tô maluco, deixa o seu like, me segue, é nóis, vambora. Que que é isso, cara?